Hello, welcome to our session, Building the Next Generation Edge with Anthos. In this session, we'll highlight some relevant patterns for software deployed at the edge on existing hardware with Anthos Bare Metal. I'm Andrew Turner, Solutions Architect with Google Cloud. Hi, I'm Mac, also known as David McDaniel. I'm the Vice President of Cloud Services at Cloud Bakers and Quinix, and I'm honored to be the 26th Google Cloud Fellow. We'll start today with the definition of the customer edge in addition to covering some key features of Anthos. Most of our time will be spent in the Edge demo, showcasing a sample application designed to run across a highly distributed system. With cloud strategies well-defined, many organizations are exploring how to modernize applications running on existing in-place hardware. We refer to these distributed Edge locations as the customer Edge. These customer Edge locations could be inside of a retail store, manufacturing facility, warehouse, or a campus. Anthos clusters on bare metal have enabled many organizations to take advantage of existing enterprise infrastructure. Hopefully you saw the exciting announcement for Google Distributed Cloud. Google Distributed Cloud introduces a portfolio of managed hardware and software solutions that extend Google Cloud's infrastructure and services out to the edge. Like Anthos bare metal, it's based and enabled on Anthos. However, Google Distributed Cloud includes features that are beyond the scope of this session. Instead, we'll be focusing on common software patterns for applications running at the edge. And with that, I'll turn it over to Mac to highlight some of the key features of Anthos. Thank you, Andrew. I'm gonna talk about some of the really unique features of Anthos, especially Anthos Configuration Management. ACM allows you to apply a GitOps style development model, including all the approvals you currently use in your standard Git compliant repo. Uh, to Anthos configurations, no matter where they're deployed across the world. Uh, when you define your configuration and approve it into your Git repo, uh, the Anthos configuration management operator automatically sees that and applies those changes to all selected clusters. It also prevents uh, manual through a console or CLI changes that would be controlled by that configuration. So it will roll those back immediately upon detecting. Another really good feature is the service, uh, service management component. This brings all sorts of telemetry back to Google Cloud, uh, things from infrastructure to service to service level communications. Uh, it enables you to create SLAs, SLOs, and SLIs, and gives you that really single pane of glass uh, performance monitoring and observability place within Google Cloud. I'll now hand it back over to Andrew for the Edge demo. Great. Thank you, Mac. We're working across multiple industries demonstrating how to solve business problems related to distributed Edge environments with Google Cloud technologies. Industries such as retail, healthcare, and manufacturing. And while the use cases vary across these industries, many of the underlying patterns to solve these scenarios are similar. Introducing Abe's Burgers a fictitious quick serve restaurant. For the next few minutes, we'll showcase software patterns enabling Abe's to run their applications across 5,000 locations using Anthos Bare Metal. Let's cover some of these scenarios now. Abe's has existing CCTV cameras and would like to leverage these video feeds. First, they would like to identify abandoned and dirty tables. In addition, they would like to leverage similar feeds of drive through for a better understanding of the wait time per vehicle. Abe's would like added features to measure quality control. Through the use of IoT sensors, we can detect the amount of time food is sitting in the hot hold. These IoT sensors produce a constant stream of data though. So we help by defining application patterns which take advantage of the data locally while providing aggregation and anomaly filtering rather than constant streaming to the cloud. The corporate office would like to leverage IoT across the restaurant edges as well using anomaly detection to predict issues with refrigeration units before it's too late. Local real-time decisioning at the edge is more important than ever. With all the technologies available today, consumers expect personalized experiences. Imagine a menu board that highlights areas based on a customer's previous interest. Forecasting demand in real-time is also critical. There are many factors to consider, such as the local traffic conditions around a location, staffing augmentation, and historical sales. Evaluating these across each location would be cumbersome, but through the use of cloud technologies, we can centralize the logic for evaluating the sales data, calculating the expected demand, while pushing these calculations out to the locations for real-time decisions. The customer experience is very important to Abe's Burgers. 
understanding when the trash bins are full, for example. Think back to a time when you were dining in a fast food restaurant, dodging the crowd to try to get your trash into a receptacle only to notice that it's already overflowing. Using sensor data and computer vision, we can help avoid these scenarios. And the decisions are not always binary. For example, the trash may be 75% full, but our forecasted demand model indicates that there's going to be a lunch rush soon. So perhaps taking out the trash now would be a better idea. We won't have time to cover each of these scenarios in depth. Instead, we'll focus on the detection of dirty tables, drive-through monitoring, and demand forecasting. This is the Abe's UI that we've created. This runs locally on the restaurant um, on the restaurant Anthos cluster and provides a single pane of glass for the restaurant staff. Imagine combining data from the use cases that were mentioned previously. General managers and franchisees can better understand the current conditions, how they compare to a baseline, and forecast for the future. These data points will also streamline restaurant operations, helping the general managers prioritize local workforce tasks, such as predictive food preparation, dining room ma management, and staffing augmentation. Let's inspect some real-time data streams, evaluating the historical trends in order to predict demand, and notify the restaurant when demand is higher than anticipated. Since Abe's is fictitious, we don't have real-time data. Instead, we created an emitter application, which enables each cluster to produce realistic-looking sales and inventory events at large scale. The output on the screen includes events being produced by the emitter on store number one Anthos cluster. These raw events are crucial to daily operations, so we'll stream them to Google Cloud. Using PubSub, we can collect these across all 5,000 locations. The JSON message on this screen should look familiar. This is the same raw event coming from the Anthos cluster. But before we can act on the data, we need to store the raw event. Raw events also need added context. Data flow will assist windowing and aggregating data as it streams through while joining to additional data sets. For example, we will add context to each raw transaction, understand which region and franchise the event belongs to. Also, we'll be using data from the product catalog to gather metadata about the item being sold. Is the item part of a combo meal, kids meal, or a dessert item? Data flow will also be beneficial by providing windowing and aggregation of events. Corporate dashboards, machine learning models, and other applications will be able to take advantage of this time series aggregation by minute, hour, and at a daily level. In addition, we'll group the aggregations based on different categories. For Abe's, that'll include cat product category, region, and franchise. These raw events will be stored in BigQuery for reference. This table is important as it records the event as it enters into the system with no manipulation. Aggregated data sets will also be persisted in BigQuery. These tables are built from the raw event through data flow and could potentially be recreated at any point in time through the raw events table. BigQuery ML enables data scientists and data analysts to build and operationalize ML models directly inside of BigQuery and using simple SQL. We built a simplistic version of demand forecasting for Abe's burgers using BigQuery ML. While production models would likely be more complex, this is meant to illustrate how simple it is to leverage BigQuery ML for creation of models. Here, we're building a linear model for demand forecasting. This model takes into account historical sales patterns per location and product to build demand forecasts at a location and for a specific item at a specific point in time. Querying these models for future months provides calculated answers to questions such as how many combo meals will store 1,000 sell next month. Abe's plans to use these calculations throughout the daily operations. So let's explore one option for getting these calculations out of the cloud and to the stores for real-time analytics. Abe's already uses MySQL within their stores, and they have a containerized version of My MySQL running on Anthos. Leveraging our BigQuery model and scheduled queries, we can calculate demand daily and store the results in Cloud SQL within Google Cloud. You'll then leverage replication to update the demand calculations at the edge. Abe's restaurant demand application has detected an increase in demand, and we can see this reflected in the UI. Do you remember the data aggregations that we talked about earlier? So Looker can use these lever can leverage these in uh, tables in BigQuery, providing franchise owners with visibility into real-time sales. The corporate office is also excited to see the updates close to real-time as they stream in from each res restaurant location. And here we have a Looker dashboard for Abe's. We can see the real-time sales data, drill down on it, or create alerts. 
Franchise owners can also see real-time service indicators across their organization. And finally, we have a dashboard for the franchise owners and corporate to visualize performance indicators company-wide. Next, Max is going to show you some examples of leveraging computer vision at the edge. Thanks, Andrew. Now let's bring the drive-through monitoring scenario to life. Here's our in-restaurant locally driven dashboard showing that our refrigerators, coffee, and drink stations are all good and our tables are all clean. Also, all actionable alerts have been resolved. Let's focus on the top right quadrant where we can see that our drive-through curbside and inside wait times are all green. As we can see here, there are only two cars in the drive-through with our wait time at only three minutes. Very acceptable to receive fresh food. We can also see that there is one guest waiting at curbside delivery and only a two minute wait for guests inside the restaurant. As the drive through queue lengthens, we can see we're at a warning status with a six minute wait now. Maybe time to start moving some staff from front of the house to back. Uh, but as typical with lunch rushes, the line keeps building and we're now at 13 minute wait. This is all automatically monitored and calculated using our computer vision machine learning models that were trained in Google Cloud and deployed and executed locally. The goal here is to forecast demand for both people and food supplies to enable the best experience for Aves customers. When this is done properly, this will lead to a positive ROI. And the way we do this is in this example are by taking video feeds from both the drive-through queue and the indoor ordering queue and using external Google Maps traffic data running the image through trained ML models for detection, and then a separate model for forecasting will result in the automatic capability of staying ahead of demand and delays. In this scenario, we're using two camera inputs, the drive-through or the parking cam, and the indoor security camera, security cam. Images from each of these cameras are fed into the respective models to produce an inference that indicates the predicted wait times, and the need to enable off-site order taking to free staff locally to serve customers. These two cameras images are being fed through two models, one using the free TensorFlow Hub people prediction model, and the other being the Google Cloud AutoML trained model to count and provide timing on drive-through traffic. Let's now go through the dining room cleanliness scenario using some real-world data. Here's our in-restaurant dashboard showing no active alerts and everything in green status. Here, we see our quick serve restaurant dining room camera and our dashboard. Our dashboard shows that we resolved all the previous actionable status messages and specifically that all tables are clean or in use. Taking a deeper look at to how this actually works, you'll first see the system recognizes that table five, five is clean and not in use. Once people are using the table, the system recognizes the people at the table using our ML model and automatically updates the table status to in use. The images are captured by the dining cam pod and run through the dirty table inference API, which in turn uses both the predict people and predict clean table models. Once the dirty table inference API has both results, it stores these results in the local database and sends any alerts to the dashboard via a local queuing system. We've used Google Cloud's AutoML service, which is part of the Vertex AI suite of tools, in order to create our dirty table model. We simply uploaded labeled images of clean tables in order to automatically train and test the models used in Anthos at the Edge. You can see we actually have pretty small number of training images and a very good recall score. Let's take a look at how we build and deploy the model containers to the cluster. At the bottom left, we have a three line Docker file that builds our container with AutoML generated model PB file. On the right, we see our Kubernetes deployment YAML that deploys our clean table model container and the service exposing it to the other cluster resources on port 8501. This enables us to call the model inferencing function using standard HTTP protocol and get the results immediately. Running the models locally at the edge reduces the inferencing latency significantly. At the center, we see our Google Cloud build YAML that downloads the exported model directly from AutoML 
builds our container described in the Docker file, pushes it to Google Container Registry, and automatically deploys to our test GKE cluster for model validation. Once the testing has been completed, we can trigger a Google Cloud Deploy execution that will deploy the containers to the Anthos Bare Metal clusters at the edge. For the people detection model, we used a publicly available TensorFlow Hub pre-built model. This significantly reduced the time and cost of deploying and using models at the edge. This made it very quick for us to get up and running and start learning what, if anything, we needed to tune in our models for better performance. One of the biggest advantages to using Google Cloud's Vertex AI suite is that many of the steps that traditionally have been manual or largely are largely automated by Google Cloud, once again, to save more money and increase the speed of model de development and deployment. As we can see here on the right, these are the basic steps involved using data to create, train, test, validate, and deploy a model to production. The issues are that all the steps are somewhat manual, that the skills needed to execute these steps are expensive and hard to find, and you then need additional skills for model deployment and application coding. When using Vertex AI's AutoML vision service, you don't have to actually create the model code yourself, but rather just select which type of model you want to create, such as single or multiple label classification or object detection, then you simply upload your training data, which automatically starts a training run. This training run automatically allocates all needed hardware and software, which you only pay for what you use, and automatically tunes your model based on the input data. As you are specifying the input to your model, you also specify how much of your data will be used to perform model testing which again will be done automatically for you. Lastly, it's simple to download the automatically generated saved PB model file to use within your application as we showed you in the previous slides. That's it for our demo today, and I'll hand it back to Andrew. Thanks, Mac. Sample code for deploying the scenarios we just showed you with Abe's Burgers is readily available. Feel free to follow along browsing the code for today's demo and read more about Anthos Bare Metal. I wanna thank you, Mac, for your partnership and I want to thank you, the audience, for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed today's session.